Socialism is a system where government is much more involved in our daily lives. Socialists believe the government should provide basic services to the public, like health care and education, for free or at a significant discount. In U.S. politics, socialist is a dirty word. Nearly 21 percent of Americans consider socialism to be a threat to the U.S. Democratic socialists are different. They believe in democracy and seek the consent of the people. Democratic socialists are skeptical of capitalism and believe all government policies should benefit workers, not business. Of course, most democratic socialist countries have vibrant economies that help them pay for the cost of de generous social programs. Many Americans support lending a helping hand to those in need, hence why democratic socialists like Bernie Sanders have become so popular. Capitalism is seen as excessive, and democratic socialism is seen as a cure for many members of the Democratic Party. Is democratic socialism the answer? And why are millennials and Gen Zs embracing this form instead of what we currently have? Is it self-motivated towards what they believe will answer their current needs, but not necessarily the needs of the whole? Don't be fooled. Democratic socialism is just a rebranded version of socialism. Of course, Scandinavian countries have been using middle-class taxes to maintain a massive social safety net for years. Their citizens know what these programs cost and what benefits they provide and have decided that they're worthwhile. But while Senator Sanders and his supporters call themselves democratic socialists, they're more like regular socialists. That's because their beliefs are not widely supported in the United States. As a result, Sanders would have to push his agenda without the consent of the people if he wants to keep his promises. Make no mistake. Bernie's radical proposals, like the Green New Deal or Medicare for All, will never get past Congress. The American people know that these old, tired ideas will never work. Imposing even a watered-down version of Bernie's socialist platform without the consent of the majority of Americans will create chaos. Hello, I'm David Grosso, and you're watching Bold TV. Today's burning question, what is the difference between socialism and democratic socialism? Let's hear from our panelists. We have Pavlina Osta, millennial expert, and Jack Crow, reporter for the National Review. Welcome to you both. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for having me. Uh, so we heard from both of you right off the top. Is there a difference? Because this is all in the news here. Jack. Yeah, there's certainly a difference. Um, democratic socialism tends to be a much more stable system, right, because you have buy-in from the middle class. The people who are actually paying for these programs know what they're getting and they're willing to participate. You see this in a lot of Scandinavian countries. Um, doesn't tend to blow up as quickly as uh, the sort of top-down Blow Soviet up style. as quickly? Yeah, well, you know, you look at uh, England in the 1970s, and that was democratic socialism. They voted in that government. Um, and the same year that the U.S. went to the moon, uh, British hospitals were didn't have electricity. So just because it's, there's democratic buy-in doesn't necessarily mean that the policies end up being effective, but it does tend to be a little bit more stable. Pavlina, let's hear from you. It is kind of like a marketing ploy. Like I think, you know, socialism is, um, it's not as great as, as, you know, what people think. So, and it's But a lot of people, but in all fairness to young people, you know, yeah. Bernie supporters tend to be our age. They're right? our age, yes. And like the thing is, they just, millennials, what I love about millennials, they're so caring. They want everyone taken care of. They want everyone to feel good. And, you know, free college sounds amazing. But David, I worked my butt off. I had two jobs when I was in college. I worked full time. I had to pay for my own college. You know, that's it, it's just not as realistic as they think it is. So one of the interesting things you said, Jack, was, you know, socialism tends to be more autocratic where people just make decisions and put it on the people. Mm -hmm. And democratic socialism is done with the consent of the people. Mm -hmm. But you said that uh, Americans aren't really for socialism. So the consent part is really difficult there. Yeah, I think that's the case right now. Um, obviously, our generation is a little more friendly to the idea, so maybe a few decades down the road we could see a situation where there is broader consent. But right now, when you look at uh, Congress and the way it's set up, um, there's no way that some of these sweeping proposals would get through. Uh, Medicare for all, free right. college, anything else, affordable housing, you know, right. the, the yeah. list goes on and on. Yes. And on. Right, yeah. exactly. And, and the fact that we have a Senate where these bills would go nowhere and they wouldn't even make it through the House tells you a lot about the demographics of the country. Um, but we are definitely moving in a direction that's more friendly to these policies. Right. So let's talk about the cost of democratic socialism, because it's it's hard to come up with a number. One of the big things that has dinged Bernie Sanders is that he can't arrive at a number. Let's take, for example, right. Medicare for all. Yeah. It's just some imaginary trillion dollar number. Do you think millennials realize how expensive these policies are? No, they definitely don't. And I also don't think they realize how far, like how much we're going to get taxed for all of these things. Like free health care, free uh, college, it's not actually free. Who do you think is paying for this? You know, it's just like you can't just, you know, um, charge a bunch of, you know, millionaires 
up their taxes and then everything else stays the same. I just don't think they understand the repercussions yeah. of what's going to happen. And Jack, you know, not to be political, I do feel like the left has better cultural connection with young people. But it also has a disconnect between reality, right? right? You know, if you sit with a bunch of young people, they say, yeah, free health care for everyone. Does anyone realize that the future taxpayer of tomorrow or rather today is us? Yeah, I, I think there is a little bit of wishful thinking on that front. Um, you see Bernie and Elizabeth Warren emphasize, well, you know, the, the billionaires, that's who we're going to tax. Um, the fact is there just aren't enough billionaires and people in that very high income bracket to create the kind of broad tax base you need for these programs. You have to tax the middle class. That's yeah. what these Scandinavian countries do. Um, I will credit Bernie. At least he is willing to admit, yes, middle class taxes are going to go up. He'll begrudgingly admit that. He doesn't like to say it, but he will. Elizabeth Warren, uh, she won't even admit that. Um, even though it's a reality that anyone who's paying attention to this stuff um, should know. And Pavlina, my first time in Sweden, my first cab I got into, the cab driver complained about the taxes that he was paying. Did he? Yes. Yes, it so makes sense. So democratic socialism, usually the poster. Why do politicians avoid talking about that? That, yeah, they could help everyone, but taxes would have to go up literally for everyone. Well, see, that's the thing. No one wants to be taxed more. You know what I mean? But it's a really great talking point that they can talk about. Doesn't, you know, helping out your neighbor, making sure they have health care sound good, you know, that kind of thing. It all sounds really great, but they're not explaining the process and explaining what they're going to have to be doing, you know, in the future or um, what they're going to have to be doing in general, like with paying their taxes. So. Oh, so we're almost out of time here. But is there a difference between democratic socialism and socialism? Because a lot of people on the right say, ah, it's all socialism. Never mind. What do you guys think, Jack? Yeah, I think there is a little bit of a difference, um, but, I, but I don't think uh, the fact that it's democratic um, and you can convince 50 percent plus one of the population uh, to pursue certain policies makes those policies any more uh, effective than they would be if they were imposed top down. Um, it just creates a less volatile political situation, but it won't help the country. Uh, Pavlina. I, I, I agree. <laughs> you know, like, I we just, have the first millennial <laughs> minute on Earth where our panelists agree. Why is that, Pavlina? I just think like, you know, it's, a, it's what we've been saying before. You know, the, it, the whole thing, it's a marketing ploy in getting into getting young people to think that they can help others when they're really not going to be able to help themselves. And if you can't help yourself, then you can't help others. So it's just not going to work. Well, thank you for this very spirited conversation today, <laughs> a historic agreement. And thank you for being here for today's panel. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day.